So let's talk about signal systems that result in breaking of a protein or proteolysis. These signaling systems play a very important role in development. We are going to first of all talk about proteolysis features of that. Each cell in embryo has to be guided along one development pathway according to its history, position and character of its neighbors. So when we have talked about this that life begins with a single fertilized egg. This egg has to divide and divide. Not only it is increasing the number of cells, the cells have to be guided along specific developmental pathways. For example, some cells have to become muscle cells, other cells have to become nerve cells, other cells have to become skin cells, so on and so forth. So cells have to exchange signals with their neighbors to coordinate their behavior. So if a cell has decided that it is going to become a nerve cell, it should tell other cells that do not develop into a nerve cell because I am going to develop into a nerve cell. So how do cells manage that? We will see that. So these processes involve regulated proteolysis, not that a protein will be degraded at random, but at specific sites. So three systems, notch, vent and hedgehog. Defect in these signaling systems results in seriously disturbed development and generally if there is a mutation in these signaling systems, genes coding these signaling systems, mouse embryo dies at or before birth. So let's look at an example of this. We are going to talk about first wind signaling system. Wind molecule is a signaling molecule. It is secreted and it binds its receptor. The receptor for this molecule also has seven pass transmembrane proteins and resembles sort of G protein coupled receptors that we have talked about. There's a co-receptor in this case and this co-receptor is LDL receptor related protein or LRP. So this is slightly different from the other systems that we have talked about. In this case, the ligand has to bind two receptors, basically the receptor and the, its co-receptor. So when that happens, the signal is conveyed to another protein in the cytoplasm called this shell. So let's look at that. So when the signal is not present, there's a protein, our, the, the protein, this shell is sitting in the cytoplasm in inactive form. And when it is inactive form, cells are producing another protein called beta-catenin. Beta-catenin is being produced and being degraded. Sounds illogical that cells are producing a protein and degrading it. What's the function? Beta-catenin has several roles. One of the roles of beta-catenin is it links cadherins to actin cytoskeleton. Cadherins are proteins that are sticking out of the cell. These proteins are responsible for cell adhesion. They bind cell to, for example, extracellular matrix. Some other adhesion proteins bind two cells together. So in cells, the adhesion molecules are also tied to the cytoskeletal elements. We have also talked about that. In this case, beta catenin is linking adherence, the adhesion molecules, the sticky molecules to actin molecules. Beta catenin is also a regulatory protein. It can affect the transcription of certain genes and also play a role in linking up cytoskeleton with cadherin molecules. Beta catenin without the signal, extra beta catenin, which is if it is present, it is degraded by a degradation complex which has which is composed of three proteins. It is composed of glycogen synthase kinase 3 beta, GSK 3 beta, glycogen synthase kinase beta. It phosphorylates, as I've said, kinases phosphorylate. It phosphorylates beta catenin, thereby marking it for degradation. And before it is degraded, it is a small ubiquitin molecule is attached to this protein 
we have talked about this that any protein that has been tagged with ubiquitin is taken to the proteasome and degraded so extra cells have taken a precaution that there's no extra beta catenin present in the cell because beta catenin if it is not attached to cadherence it will go to the nucleus and act as a transcription factor it will recruit the transcription factors and result in transcription the other proteins here are apc adenomatous polyposis coli it is not important if you remember these names but you should know the abbreviation apc this protein is mutated in 80% of people who have colon cancer or colon polyps it is important protein auxin is basically a structural protein that is holding this complex together it is serving as a scaffold so here we have a kinase activity protein and a, a scaffold protein the beta catenin destruction complex when the cells receive a signal the signal is went the ligand is went it binds the receptor it binds the co-receptor and this results in activation of a protein called this shelf this protein basically causes this complex to fall apart and beta catenin is no longer phosphorylated and when beta catenin is not phosphorylated it becomes available it can go to the nucleus and it can result in transcription of wnt response genes as i mentioned earlier that the apc gene mutations occur in 80% of human colon cancers apc binding to beta catenin inhibits so that beta catenin accumulates so when this beta catenin accumulates it can result in altered transcription and it can also result in transcription of certain genes let's talk about another signaling system that involves proteolysis we are going to talk about notch system there is a protein that is expressed on the surface of future neuronal cell called delta that binds to notch on neighboring cells so here is a cell initially these cells were all unspecified epithelial cells this cell decided to become a future neuronal cell or nerve cell it displayed a molecule called delta on its surface delta will bind receptors on the surface of adjacent cells epithelial cells and the receptor for that is notch delta signals to the neighboring cells not to become neuronal because this cell has already decided to become a nerve cell so it is signaling all these other cells not to become a nerve cell nerve cells arise as isolated single cells within an epithelial sheet of precursor cells as you can see here future nerve cell signals it's is signaling its neighbors at the same time to and inhibiting them from becoming a nerve cell it, this is also called lateral inhibition and it is as you can see contact dependent here you can see it in an enlarged form here is a delta which is being expressed by the cell which is going to become a nerve cell and here we have notch i would like to point out that mature notch goes through three cleavages two of one of them uh, the the first one is is when it is being matured in the golgi apparatus and the second the last two cleavages of notch depend upon its interaction with delta so these two cleavages depend on its notch's interaction with the delta so the third cleavage which is right here when this happens a piece of notch dislocates it moves from the cytoplasm and it goes to the nucleus and let's see what happens when it goes to the nucleus it binds other factors and it recruits these transcription factors and causes expression of genes that block that cell from neuronal differentiation here i would like to also mention that beta amyloid precursor protein which is released by the neuronal cells is also a similar type of process in which protein is cleaved 
So we have seen two examples of signaling systems that mediate their effects through proteolysis, which are very specially, especially very important during development.